Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we're painting the engine bay. All right, quick update on where we are. So that was just um, some, figured the easiest way to film that was just to throw a GoPro up in the garage roof or on, on the door and film it that way. So that's what I did. Um, so everything, we're, we're kind of just dried um, here with the primer. Um, went on pretty well, the gun I have, uh, not super thrilled with it, so I am. I do have a new gun on order. I'm going with this uh, new 3M AccuSpray gun, which I'll show you guys when that comes in. Um, overall laid down pretty well despite my issues with the gun um, so now this is, this is actually really cool because I can kind of see where I have a lot of the defects it was really hard to see with just the metal and the leftover paint and, and things like that so now I've got a really nice surface to work with I'm gonna come in and um, hit it with some filler on the firewall and probably just sand out a couple of these little holes these um, imperfections up here just because this is really uh this is like a high view area up here so come through here um you can kind of see where the i guess the um the welds from the factory for the control arm or like shock tower kind of stuff went up here so i'll probably just fill those in and just give it a once over and then also give that a quick coat with with the filler as well so next thing we're doing here is just laying down some filler on top of the primer and then we'll probably sand that, give it a good once over, and then on to real paint. So, moving along. This is a big step though. Kind of got past the, the mental hurdle of getting everything off and having a clean surface to work with. So this is cool. another update basically just starting on um, getting the filler sanded down so I guess I'm not expecting this to be a kind of a full flat surface given that a lot of this area especially here and right here are going to be covered up by my coolant tanks right expansion and overflow um, that said if I were to ever remove those I don't want to see big dips in the filler so we are going to come through here and, and just 
basically fill this. I'm sanding it down. I'm already through the metal, through the primer, um, to the metal. So it's going to have to get reprimed, which we knew anyway, which is totally fine. Um, more than anything, I really just wanted it to be kind of presentable. Granted, it is a firewall. You know, it's not the exterior of the car. Um, but I just wanted a good surface to be able to work with. So we're going to keep sanding on this. Um, basically using... I got this Durablock kit a while ago from Amazon. Um, comes with like six different sanding blocks and I also got these two rolls of paper. So I've got 80 grit and 180. And um, basically started with the 180 but it just wasn't taking off enough filler. And actually what I'm using is this Dynalite by Dynatron, which is interesting. Lightweight filler. Um, it's actually not that lightweight. Uh, I think I just haven't gotten my workflow down well enough on this. I, ha I just haven't done enough body work, but I think I let it sit too long and it got too hard. So it's just a lot of work to get this off. I might bring out the, the DA sander and try to do it that way, give my arms a break. But yeah, just making some progress, gonna come through here. And I've also got uh, some areas on my inner fenders that I wanna take care of specifically over there where the battery was. So yeah, just more sanding. Um, I've actually got a new paint gun coming next weekend so really i just have to come through here and get all my um, sanding done to get the surface where i want it and then we're going to come through here prime again base coat clear coat done um one other thing i'm thinking about doing is actually just building a little lip so the beginning to my transmission tunnel so that i can actually weld on this before i do my final paint um, because if i have to weld after the paint then i will burn the paint off and i'll have to come in there and actually either do some more paint or do like a strip of, of undercoating or black or something like that to, to fix that. Um, so I may actually take a stab at that in the span of this project. I'm not sure. It's like one of those things. I just want to kind of get through this and get out of it um, so we can move on with the project. That said, I don't want to ruin paint that I spend a lot of time trying to get right. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about as I'm sitting here sanding off all this filler. So more sanding. All right, so a little update on this side project. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically come off about two inches from the firewall. Um, so I, I just need to make this sheet, this piece right here out of sheet metal. Um, so I'll take my cuts from the front that you saw me tape onto the firewall. And basically those will be welded back here on the back side of it. So um, I won't have any messy seams or anything in the engine compartment and then I'll just be able to apply a little bit of seam sealer on the outside. And that should be good to go. So need to pull this out now, cut this out, and then see what that looks like on a piece of sheet metal.
All right, quick update. So we've got this um, at the beginning to my trans tunnel, um, all welded in. And what's gonna happen is, not, not the cleanest welds, but it's okay. Um, so what's gonna happen is that'll get uh, covered by seam sealer and paint and, and so on, and probably sound deadening too, so no big deal there. Um, but it is solid, it's kind of set up the way that I want the trans tunnel to run, so that'll be good when I actually get in here and start to do that permanently. I've got a good base to start from, and I don't have to weld to my firewall and screw up my brand new paint, which I will have. So kind of swinging around to the engine compartment. Um, you know, obviously I did burn through the primer with all the welding and some of the filler, so I do need to just give it a quick skim coat and also just clean up that, that edge, probably just come in with the, um, the grinder and a sanding wheel and just clean that up so it's nice and uniform all the way around. And, um, yeah, once I get that kind of sanded down, I need to go over the whole engine compartment, all this primer with a scuff pad, just a red, red scuff pad to scuff up the primer. Then we're going to come back, hit it with another coat of primer, two base coats and two clear coats, and we should be good to go. So this is cool because I think I'm finally in a place where, um, where we're going to get this done. So we're getting close on this. Um, yeah, a little bit more grinding, sanding, filler, and then we're on to the paint. issues with the gun. I think what happened was is I have a uh, pressure regulator on my tank and I thought I had that where I wanted it which is right around 40 psi to the gun and then obviously I've got another gauge on my gun which steps it down from there for the, the actual gun and the tip itself. Um, but that was actually wrong and when I looked uh, after the fact I saw that my compressor had been uh, basically down at 10 psi so I had really low pressure to the gun. Um, and atomization kind of sucked. Um, so I noticed it in my base coat and actually my prime too, but I just assumed having not used the gun before that that's how it worked, uh, which is not the case. So um, definitely have some major orange peel 
Um, yeah, so kind of sucks, but at the same time, you know, the overall goal was to get myself like a nice kind of color matched um, application for the engine bay and a protective coat that would last a hell of a lot longer than, you know, rattle can. Um, so mission accomplished there. Um, now, I guess the, the question is, is whether or not I come back and color sand this and try to smooth out the surface. So given that it's an engine bay, I'm not sure. Um, I've still got a few more weeks before I get the engine back in, so I've got time to think about this. But overall, um, I'm pretty thrilled with how it came out and the firewall looks good. I've got some bumps, kind of imperfections over there um, where, where the bodywork you know, just didn't quite cut it, but that's okay because most of them, um, most of the places where I patched and smoothed it out turned out really well. So pretty happy about that. So now um, I've got to move on to, I've got a bunch of other stuff I need to paint. So all the stuff that has to go back in here needs to be cleaned up, painted, treated, make sure it doesn't rust and it's going to be good for the long haul. So this was a long episode, a uh, lot of work, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, I understand totally why guys don't do this or, or girls or whatever, why people don't do this because it's a lot of work to kind of smooth and clean an engine bay and paint it. So anyway, thanks for hanging in there. This was probably a long episode. I haven't edited it yet, but I assume it's probably gonna be closer to an hour. Um, anyway, hope you like it. Uh, shoot me some comments. Let me know what I should do about this paint if I should not worry about it if I should color sand it and buff it, or if I should just sand the whole thing and redo it. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one where we start cleaning up some parts to put back in here.